doing our Grizzly 700 Kodiak 700 airbox mods. Uh, this is going to be the new kit we're selling to replace the crappy OEM air filter that is a push-in style to a positive clamp style. Um, I wanted to show you guys some of the installation process on it. It's pretty simple if you got the right tools and are semi-handy. Uh, we're going to sell it in two versions. One's going to be the kit to install it into your own airbox and one is going to be the kit installed into a lower airbox already which is minimal work on your end where you just have to replace a few of your OEM parts to make it complete. Um, the video we're shooting today is mainly to show you how to install it into your airbox to see if you feel like it's something you can do there at home. If not, then we'll have the option to spend a little more money and get one installed already. Or you could send us yours and we'll install it for you. Um, I guess we're going to start out. Uh, the basic procedure on it's going to be we have to remove this part right here, glued in. We're going to sh install the aluminum plate into this hole, which is right here. Okay. This is going to install into here, and that will give you your positive clamp surface. So you can either install a foam filter or a K&N filter. We'll have two versions of it. Um, it's going to require having to modify your stock intake tube that slides into here. Right now this intake tube would come through, hang out into here, into the open air box surface. And then this compartment inside here is actually where your intake air temperature sensor is going to come in. Your AIS port, which is the bleed off of the exhaust port. And this is a crankcase vent, which comes off your rocker cover. Um, well, not rocker cover anymore, but valve cover, which vents back into here, and then it vents around the outside of this tube back into your air filter area and goes back in. So we're going to eliminate a lot of the venting area for it as well, which I'll explain later what we got to do to correct that. But this is Steve. He is your main assembler here at EHS Racing. So if any of your orders ever come in wrong or boogered up, it's usually his fault, so you can know who, who you're dealing with. But he's going to start working on doing the airbox. I'll do some commentating and uh, we'll show you how the process goes. So right now they got kind of a cheap glue on there. You just got to peel it off. If you want to put some heat to it, it sometimes will make it a little bit quicker to go for it. Um, we kind of found it was easier just to get in there and use some muscle and pry it apart. We haven't broke one yet. Uh, when we were using the heat gun, we did melt it just a little bit, trying to get the glue hot enough to separate. Um, let me grab one of the ones we melted to make sure you don't do that. Okay, watch that, get it popped off. That's about the easiest, just force and pull the glue out. This one we were using heat and we got a little hot here on this seam. This is something that you don't want to disturb because this is what's going to seal your air box from the outside element. So that needs to stay. That pushes under the rubber gasket that goes up inside the lid and it makes a seal around there. So if you're running our pre-filter, you know, that's a little less important because the water level's right here. If you're running snorkels or something in this, this is pretty critical to keeping water out of your air box. Okay, so now we got the fresh one off. We're pulling the glue off of it. Okay. Next part is going to be figuring out where to cut the snorkel down. Okay, all the snorkels I've seen or the inlet boot has this line right around it as part of the factory casting, we'll call it. That's basically the point at where you're going to have to cut it. If you don't, it was how many inches? You remember? Okay, we'll get a measurement. I think it was two and a quarter, but right around that is where you're going to want to cut it. Next step. that two and an eighth to 
two and a quarter inches, somewhere in there. If you follow the line out, stay between two and an eighth and two and a quarter inches, you'll be okay. Okay. All right, and we found the easiest way to center up this billet adapter into the lower box. And you're showing the slop in there. It is important to get it centered up. This is a loose fit. Okay, so this is how to center it up so it's exactly in the center. So the piece that we cut off that we're not going to use in the end. If you slide it onto the adapter, it gives you just enough space to center it into the air box. And it does take a little bit of force to get it in there. But once you get it in there, just turn it until it's straight, which doesn't really affect anything, just aesthetically. All right, 3 16th drill bit. If you have a right angle drill, it'll make it easier or something for it. Most people's drills are probably longer than what's gonna fit in that box. So if you can't get it, you can mark it with something, you can puncture it with a nail or anything you want to find the outside ones. Down here are going to be the two harder ones to get to your box. Alright, pull it back out. And we'll take quarter inch a little bit. Make a hole up here. Show them a little bit once you're on the back side. So we got two bolts on the outside and we got two inside the chamber. These two lower bolts, when you go to install the plate, you probably want to just hit a little silicone around the outside. That way they're sealed up from the outside well. And we'll take we'll take this edging tool to knock a little bit of plastic burr off from drilling the holes. If you don't have one, you could use sandpaper. It just makes it a little neater. This part will be going out to here if you need a little WD-40 or something to install it. Did you sand these down generally? No. Nah. Just force, force it on there, WD-40. But once the once you bolt the build adapter into the box. The snorkel boot goes on easier because there's less play for it to rock side to side. So now our air is sealed. Okay, this is direct through air filter into here, into there. Before, this used to just dangle up into your stock air filter. The air come in and it could go around the outside of it. So this is now a tight fit. We're going to end up putting silicone around in there to make it even tighter of a fit once everything gets installed. At this point, Steve will go in and install it. If you also want to, you can put, I kind of recommend putting some silicone around here and squishing it into place. That way everything is nice and tight. So your stock box also, as we said, we had two versions. We're going to have the k version. We got the Union here. And we're going to have the uni version. The uni version will fit down right in here, no cutting, it just fits inside the box. The K&N version, you're going to have to remove a few things to get it to fit down in there. We will no longer... That one's cut. That one's cut. So look at the... These are in the box normally, the, where the filter goes against it, in this. That's the parts we're having to remove. We gotta make them look like this. Okay. The 
you gotta cut that fin down and these parts in the back. This will allow it to sit down in there and fit into place. This one gives you all sorts of room to go up in there. Uh, 316 Salen wrench. We've cut this one down. I'm going to see if I can get some short ones to give you guys in the kits so you can get in there and tighten them two top bolts up. So then we would also add some silicone around here to fill this in both right there. That's going to create, once the boot's into place, that'll create an extra seal. There's going to be two ways you can do this box also, which I'll explain while Steve's putting that stuff on there. Spray some sort of lube inside of this intake boot. And like I said, it's... There's really no easy way to do it. Just push it and turn it, and it'll pop on. If it gives you a lot of trouble, you can gently sand the corner edge of the inside lip just a little bit. But you want it as tight as possible. That way it's a really good solid seal. And the little ear on the boot lines up to the box. And your, your factory clamp goes there. Okay. So then we're back here. So this would be the part we're siliconing. So then, we, as we said, we have your intake air temperature sensor you're going to have to hook back up. This we're going to block off because this is the AIS. This is no good on the Grizzlies or Kodiaks. It just creates a lot of trouble. And this is a vent. So the venting of the motor is all normal stuff. You need some places your piston travels down to vent the crankcase and everything else to create pressure. So the venting's coming in here. It is possible that it can get a little bit of oil coming back out, especially after your Grizzly or Kodiak gets some hours on it and it's starting to have some compression loss on the rings. So if this is going to fill up with oil, or if you don't put the top back on, it is a place that could possibly fill up full of water if you ever did any submergent. I'm going to leave this off on every one I do. I don't think it's necessary to have this controlled anymore. What you'll end up doing is the intake air temperature sensor is not inside the air pass, so it's not measuring it. It really wasn't ever to begin with, but this will give you the same temperature as your air box air is, is going to be over here. So it's always going to know the correct temperature of your air box. The other thing, now that it's open, we would drill a little hole down here on the bottom just so there is a drain, you know, because you don't want this filling up full of water and then it sits right there right next to your seal for your air box inlet that could bypass your air filter. As stuff fills up in here, it'll just drain out into here. It'll be no big deal. There's no way that dirt can get by here now, but we don't want stuff just collecting and sitting in there so it can leak past the seal that's there. Um, so we got our new one. That's all done. We haven't trimmed it yet. The uni's going to go on there. And basically all you got to do to get your air box back in is put them two in there and the clamp on the front. It's pretty simple. Then we'll have our air filter that'll sit directly on top. So what you've done for performance is you've created a better venturi coming through here. You now don't have this hanging way out in here with dead space. So before your air had to go in here, go back, come back this way. You can get some benefit if you don't want to get this kit by cutting this down flush. You will see some gains. The old drop-in stock filter was just a clamp fit. It had the air box lid holding it in place. This creates a big place for dirt to come around and leak. You will see a tremendous amount of dirt leaking by on used filters. Um,
this is going to eliminate everything and it's supposed to make three more horsepower or it does make three more horsepower on our dual package it made three horsepower we're going to test it with a stock exhaust and see but i would expect similar results on a stock exhaust do it as well it's a pretty good and easy model uh, it'll be available on the website before too long if you got any questions give us a call